Hey, thanks, Gaurav, very much. So, hello, everyone. I hope my screen is visible and my audio is properly working. So, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for joining this session. Let me start uh, by introducing myself. My name is Rohit, and I'm working as a senior technical support engineer with Red Hat. And now it's been five years working with uh, different uh, private cloud platforms and uh, dealing with uh, some of the trending technologies around this private cloud platforms. So the topic that I'm going to present and discuss today is around the same public cloud platform. And um, more specifically, it would be a combination of uh, OpenStack and OKD or OpenShift you can call as. So the topic name is Courier CNI and uh, Octavia to manage uh, OKD services. So I have reserved uh, last uh, five to 10 minutes uh, for Q&A. So in between, if there are any doubts, uh, I would encourage all of you to you know, discuss at the end because we have a time constraint and uh, also the content that we are going to see has some you know, broader aspects. Moving to the uh, agenda. Uh, just a uh, note to be made that uh, I'll be starting with the uh, very basic of uh, what I'm, whatever I'm going to present today. And uh, then moving slowly to the intermediate and then advanced level. So the agenda is uh, also designed in the same manner, like uh, moving to, you know, like moving from a very basic or the fundamentals uh, to the advanced level. So we'll be seeing the terminologies like uh, courier Kubernetes than Octavia or load balancing as a service in OpenStack specifically. Then we'll see what is OKD and OKD services. Then we'll see the courier integration uh, design part, how exactly it's, uh, you know, uh, integration is made. Then we'll see the OpenStack on, uh, sorry, OpenShift on OpenStack architecture. Then comes the courier architecture. And at the then end, we have a very interesting demo where we'll see how exactly using the services, OpenShift services, the load balancing is made and how Octavia comes into picture, you know, managing all the load balancing part. All right, let's start with uh, the courier Kubernetes. What is exactly a courier, courier Kubernetes? So it's, it's a project that is, uh, you know, being developed specifically for Kubernetes uh, integration with uh, OpenStack networking. So this uh, is a SDN solution uh, that uses container networking, uh, also known as CNI and uh, OpenStack uh, Neutron. And uh, Courier and uh, OpenShift container platform integration is primarily designed for, you know, OpenShift container platform that runs on OpenStack VMs. <clears throat> then comes uh, the Octavia LBAS. It's uh, another project or component uh, that we are going to talk. So Octavia basically provides uh, load balancing as a service uh, in OpenStack environment. And in, in OpenStack, uh, Octavia needs to interact with uh, other OpenStack components like uh, Nova, Neutron, Barbican, Keystone, then Glance, and etc. And uh, for that communication purpose, like uh, communication between the Octavia and this other OpenStack services or component, uh, Octavia is designed in such a way that, you know, to make this communication easier, there is something designed called as the provider driver. And so we have two types of provider driver. One is Amphora and uh, the another one is uh, OVN. So Amphora is the default driver, which comes as a part of Octavia deployment. So basically, it's uh, just a normal NOVA VM that uh, runs HFROX inside and uh, that does the job of load balancing. And uh, then we have the OVN provider driver. So the environment that we are going to see in the demo section will be having the OVN provider driver itself because it, it would be 16.1, the train release, OpenStack train release. So by default, it will be having the OVN provider driver. Now, see, there are many advantages and disadvantages of uh, using OVN driver. But the most important feature of using OVN driver is that OVN load balancing can be done without VMs. So when we say without VMs, uh, that means there is no need of a special VM for load balancing like that. Uh, that will act as a member at the back end for load balancing. So there is no such need. So for the OVN, 
Load balancing is completely managed by the virtual switch data path engine. That means uh, we have open flow, uh, you know, packet rules that come into picture when using OVN. So whatever load balancing is done, that is be done based on the open flow rules. Also, we are going to see at the end like how open flow rules are responsible for lo load balancing. Moving to the next slide. So most of you, you know, familiar might be familiar with this diagram as uh, this is one of the very few diagrams available for Octavia LBAS. So this diagram is uh, specifically to OpenStack load balancing use case without courier involved. Okay, so there is no courier in this diagram. And it's important to understand this architecture because the courier deals with OpenStack Octavia and Neutron. So first, let's try to understand the terminologies used over here, starting with the HTTPS listener or listener. So what is exactly a listener? So listener is a you know a, a port on which the load balancer listens traffic. And over here in this diagram, we have HTTPS listener. That means we have listener created for 443 port. And yeah, we can have more than one listener. Then we have the member, which is which is inside the pool. So members are your instances, like the Nova instances that serves traffic behind your load balancer, or what we also called as the Amphora. So you can have multiple such members inside one single, uh, you know, the, the thing called as a pool. So this pool is nothing but grouping uh, for your members. Then next we have the pool health monitor or manager we can call as. So this is basically for monitoring the health of individual amphora or the member. So in our scenario, this might not come into picture because uh, you know this is not supported when uh, we are using the OEN provider driver. So this is just for amphora driver. And over oh, here we are having Elbas V2 agent or what we call as the Octavia API. Uh, so the HTTPS traffic uh, will enter the listener and it reaches to the load balancer. Okay, so the LB load balancer block is not directly present, but uh, you can consider it as between the listener and the pool box. So once the traffic reaches the load balancer, then the member serves that traffic so decision of which member should listen or serve that traffic is decided by the routing algorithm and when using amphora as a driver default driver we have round robin uh, routing algorithm and uh, when using ovn as a provider the only available algorithm what we use is the source port ip algorithm so this was all about the basic Octavia architecture diagram. Next, we'll move uh, towards the next, uh, I mean, the, the next terminology called as the OKD. So OKD is uh, open community distribution version for OpenShift. Many of you might be already knowing this. And it was previously called as the OpenShift origin, but uh, then it was renamed to OKD. So everything is the same for OKD and uh, OpenShift. Um, just the thing is that OpenShift has been made more mature day by day as you know people are really using it for enterprise use case. Also for the demo purpose uh, that we are going to see is uh, based on the OpenShift lab and not directly with the upstream bits. So the, the, there is specific reason of using that uh, OpenShift lab uh, is because uh, the courier integration or uh, the deployments uh, really becomes easy when using with the OpenShift instead of OKD directly. But the main purpose re remains the same, like you know uh, how we are going to manage the services and load balancing the traffic. So the main purpose will remain the same, and we are going to see that as well. And after implementation of uh, courier, what uh, we are going to see is that each OpenShift service gets a correspondent load balancer. So the load balancer that actually happens via you know open flow rules, as I already said, using the open OVN rules. So this will be the most interesting part uh, that we are going to see in the demo section. Moving to the next slide. So this slide is about OKD service, cluster IP service. So service, uh, you know, uh, 
you might be al already knowing that service is the way we where we can expose our application running on the pods. So like when we have uh, a replication of pods services, services serves like a load balancer where it is a proxy, the connection it receives on the pod. So there are basically two types, main important types, uh, cluster IP service and the node port service. There is one more like type is called as a load balance or something. I, I don't remember exactly that, but these two are the you know uh, main service type like cluster IP and the node port. So talking about node port, uh, it exposes the service on each node's IP. And uh, another one that we are going to consider for our use case is the cluster IP service type. So this, this will be the default service type. So whenever we want to make a service available directly to a cluster, we expose the service on the cluster's internal IP. Likewise, uh, you know, we, we can see in the diagram where we have a Kubernetes cluster with uh, multiple pods uh, hosting some application and a common service type uh, cluster IP, which makes sure that the service is only reachable within this particular cluster. All right, so moving further, uh, I just wanted to, you know, uh, uh, let you know that whatever things uh, or whatever content that I'm discussing, uh, I've just put a source for that content. Like, uh, so in case uh, if anyone wants to refer after the session, they can just have a look at the source link. Now, here comes the main part where we'll see how the courier integration is made with uh, OpenShift and OpenStack. So courier and OpenShift container platform integration is uh, primarily designed for OpenShift container platform cluster, which are running on OpenStack VMs. So first here, we need to understand how the OpenShift and OpenStack architecture looks like. And then we'll see uh, the courier architecture. Yeah, so OpenShift on OpenStack architecture, you can see the architecture diagram. So we have two different platforms connected with a uh, broken lines. The below one is the OpenStack platform, which serves as the hypervisor for the OpenShift platform. So the OpenShift is deployed on OpenStack Compute Node VM. This is the you know thing we should uh, need to make a note of it. Like OpenShift is deployed on the OpenStack Compute Node VMs. So over here, you can see Nova Compute Node, which is a bare metal node. And we have VMs created with the help of uh, the KVM manager. Then we have Cinder and Swift Storage as the backend with uh, Ceph. And uh, then we have Octavia and Courier present as well. Coming to the OpenShift platform, we have applications uh, hosted on the VMs, which can be called as uh, you know uh, worker or master node in OpenShift terminologies. So this diagram is basically just to make you pictureize the OpenShift on OpenStack platform and how it exactly looks like. So similarly, we are using uh, OpenStack, uh, you know, provided log, uh, provided storage, and similarly, OpenStack provided networking as well. So next thing that we are going to see is uh, courier architecture. And as a part of uh, courier architecture, we have courier components like uh, courier controller, then we have watcher, then we have courier CNI. We have other important, uh, you know, other components like handler as well, but these are some of the, you know, important one. So this courier components are installed as a pod in OpenShift container platform uh, using the OpenShift uh, courier namespace. So let's see like, exactly like what are each of these components mean. So talking about the courier controller, so this is nothing but you know a single service instance installed on the master node, and um, in case of OpenShift container platform, this is modeled as uh, what we can call as a deployment object. Next, we have Watcher. It basically connects to the API and observes the endpoints and invokes a, you know a registered handler to pass an event. Then next we have a courier CNI. It's nothing but a, you know con container installing and configuring courier as a CNI driver on each OpenShift container platform node. And uh, basically, if, if you want to represent this as an object in OpenShift container platform, it is being represented as a daemon set. Okay, well, here we go with the architecture diagram of uh, courier. 
Now let's try to understand this uh, architecture in detail. So courier components, uh, you know, are deployed as we all know that they are deployed in the courier OpenShift courier namespace. So you can see the courier controller is, um, you know, is a single container service pod uh, which is installed on the infrastructure node as a part of as a deployment OpenShift resource type. Then the courier CNI container installs and configure the courier CNI driver and on each of the OpenShift master or infrastructure node and compute node as a daemon set. So then the next, the courier controller, what is does it? It just watches the OpenShift API server for pod service and namespace, like whatever creation, updates, and, and deletion events. So it just make a watch of that events. So what it does it, it's map the OpenShift API calls to the corresponding object in the Neutron and uh, Octavia. So this means that, uh, you know, every networking, every network solution that implements the Neutron trunk port functionality can be used uh, uh, to back OpenShift via courier. And this also includes like many uh, open source solutions like OVS, OVN, as well as uh, some Neutron uh, compatible SDNs as well. So last and the interesting slide we have is uh, the service creation workflow. Like exactly if I just, you know, execute command SVC create and what exactly happens with respect to the courier and how exactly the backend thing works that we are going to see in this diagram. So let's try to understand the actual flow when uh, any service creation takes place. So first let's try to make out a picture that, uh, you know, we have a courier as a block and it stands in between OpenShift block and OpenStack block. So we have OpenShift on the left side, OpenStack on your right side, and in between we have the courier. So the, 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 just try to you know imagine this scenario. So now what courier does is it watches OpenShift endpoints, like endpoints for ports or services. And each of these endpoints has a watcher. Now, any job or any, any task that happens with uh, you this, this, this services or, or, or the pods, it passes that message uh, through the watcher. So courier, what it does is it connects to this watcher and that's how courier knows like something is happening on OpenShift side. So watching the endpoints uh, is uh, this happens is in, in, in a loop like number of times. So any, any, any uh, uh, what I can say any uh, job or any task or any update event is made. Uh, so this is continuously watching in loop and it's just reporting back. So whenever a new service is created in Kubernetes, uh, we have a thing called as um, custom resource definition, CRD, what we call as in, as in short form. So it gets created, which has you know details like service IP or the target port. And this gets enrolled into another thing called as Kubernetes load balancer. So whenever a new service gets created, it has its own you know, definition. And that definition has uh, information like service IP or the target port. And that gets enrolled into our courier load balancer for that particular service only. And all this is managed by a, you know, a, a thing called a service handler. Okay. So the similar happens for the pod creation flow as well. So like uh, whenever a new pod is created, courier watches it and creates a courier port or neutron port specific to that pod. So courier also try to watch some other things like VIP, VIP to particular to that pod and etc. things. So this was the last slide. I just wanted to switch to my terminal. All right, so I hope the terminal is visible for you guys. Uh, Gaura, just give a hack if it's visible. I wrote the app, it's visible. Okay, thank you. 
So before moving to the actual functioning of the courier, I just wanted to give you an overview like how this environment is deployed because this is uh, OpenShift deployed on OpenStack. So the version of OpenStack is uh, train release, uh, it is 16.1, RHOSP 16.1. And uh, I have deployed uh, OpenShift 4.8 on OpenStack compute mode specifically. So I'll just try to show you what things I have as a part of uh, infrastructure. So right now I'm on the overcloud node. So this is my OpenStack nodes. I have one controller node and um, one compute node. So talking about the resources of this particular environment. So this is a you know a not too big, not too small environments uh, with 128 uh, gigs of RAM and uh, two or three TB of uh, disk, I guess, and uh, uh, adequate number of CPUs. So all thing, all all we need to understand over here is uh, the amount of uh, memory that we are assigning because uh, the minimum requirement of uh, you know open shift nodes like worker node or the master node is uh, 16 gigs so we need to make sure that whenever we are hosting uh, uh, all these nodes on the compute node our compute node has uh, that much uh, number of uh, uh, memory available at least so i'll just now show you the open shift nodes All right, so I have total six nodes and out of which uh, five are my OpenShift nodes. So I have total three master nodes over here and one is the bootstrap node and one is the worker node. So I'll just show you now the install hyphen config file for OpenShift and what all things uh, we need to change or we need to consider whenever we are uh, deploying a courier infrastructure specifically. And talking about this deployment, so I, uh, it's like uh, whatever steps that I have followed, those are already you know available in the upstream doc. I have just followed uh, similarly as it is without any change. So I'll just now try to show you the install config file that I have used for OpenShift installation. So this is my file and the thing that we should uh, you know notice over here is that the network type okay so by default over here we have uh, openshift sdn as the network type but uh, in, just because we are we need to use uh, courier uh, we need to replace that with uh, courier instead of uh, using openshift sdn so this is the important change that we need to consider whenever we are uh, you know uh, deploying a Courier, courier Kubernetes uh, enabled uh, environment. And the next, there are some other like network related changes, like whatever network I'm using in my OpenStack. Uh, I just need to, you know, mention that over here. And apart from that, everything is uh, default. Like nothing major, uh, what I can say, a change we need to make in that file. All right, so this was all about the uh, environment. Now let's try to, you know, see, uh, let's try creating a service and uh, check how exactly in the load balancing happens. Okay, so what I'm, what I've done is I've just, you know, already created some of the services for demonstration purpose because due to time constraint, uh, you know, uh, we cannot just create uh, uh, live. So I just created it uh, for you guys and I'll just show you like what things I have created and how exactly the uh, load balancing happens. Okay, let's see the service now. So yeah, you can see I have a service named as devconf with a type cluster IP and the IP over here. 
So I'll just show you the definition file. Yeah. So this is, is this was the definition file that I use for um, creating a service. It's a very basic definition file with a kind as service. Then in the specs section, use uh, the just mention about the protocol port and the target port that service will be using. So over here for this service, uh, we are using the port as 80 and the protocol as TCP. All right, so now we have the service created with uh, service name DevCon service and uh, we have the associated cluster IP as well. Now, uh, when this service was getting created, um, you know, if you remember, like I have, um, I just mentioned before, like, uh, uh, we have a term called a CRD, custom definition, uh, uh, custom refers definition where all the service related information is stored. So what happens is using that information at the same time, whenever we are creating this service, we uh, there is a you know courier load balancer gets uh, created at the back end. So when the service creates gets complete laid, uh, I'll just try to show you uh, how exactly the courier uh, load balancer uh, looks like for this particular service. So I'll just run OC get KLB. I have a associated courier load balancer called with the same name DevCon service uh, already created. So till now we have uh, OC service and we have uh, courier load balancers created. So now for this operation, OpenStack is not aware about anything like, uh, you know, OpenShift has created a service and a KLB. So Open, OpenStack is completely unaware about this particular operation. So next thing, uh, what we are going to do is connect this service with uh, some ports. And, uh, you know, uh, for that connection purpose, uh, we'll need some endpoints to be created. So I have already created ports, uh, some basic ports which has uh, Apache on it. Okay, so I have three pods uh, named with DevCon5 and pod running. So let's run with the wide. Yeah, so all these three pods has a IP. So we need to make uh, you know note of this IP because this IP will be using for our endpoint creation so it's like uh, starting with uh, ending with 21 242 and triple two so over here three ports running each with each of its respective ip and uh, here it's kubernetes responsibility to make sure that you know each port gets ip and uh, also each port gets a courier port also so this is also important things to notice over here so see get courier port so for all the three ports, we have a corresponding courier port created as well. Now we'll use this IP and uh, you know create endpoints. So I've already created it uh, for the demonstration purpose, but I'll just try to show you the definition file. So what I've done is I've just used this three IP in my endpoint definition file. Yeah. So here yeah, you can see the kind as endpoints and the service name, I have just kept the same service name and just mention the IP address over here, like 21, 242 and triple two ending with, and uh, the same port like 8080 port that I've mentioned in the service. Okay, so once I just ran this file, I get the endpoints created, OC get endpoints. So you can see I have the name and then the endpoints created for all the three ports specifically over here with the port as 8080. You can see that all, you know, all the three endpoints are pointing to three, three different ports. Okay. So till now we have a, a service, we have a Kubernetes uh, courier load balancer and we have endpoints. Now let's see the Octavia load balancer part. Okay, so let's see if we have a correspondent load balancer, Octavia load balancer created in OpenStack or not. So I'll just use command OpenStack load balancer list. All right, I guess we have 
Yep. Yeah. As you can see, we have, uh, you know, a load balancer created with the same service name like DevCon Python service. And one thing you have noticed that uh, the cluster IP like this OC get SVC. This one. Same IP is being used as a VIP for the load balancer. Now let's make a show to this load balancer. Yeah, so it's current provisioning status is active and operating status is also online. So we have some other things, uh, you know, to understand over here as far as OpenStack load balancer is concerned. So we have a pool for a load balancer where we have the pods running. So let's try to see if my pool has those particular pods uh, present or not. So I'll use OpenStack. member list and the ID of the pool. Yeah, so you can see the same pods that I have created. Those are now part as the members of this open stack. Oh, see, get pods. This one. These three pods that we have created from OpenShift side, they have the OpenStack load balancer, I mean, they are added as the member. And we have the port as well, port 8080 that we have mentioned. Now, what we are going to see is the listener, like uh, the service, the service that we have created that correspond to the listener in the, the OpenStack. So let's see the listener. Let's not show. Yeah, so as you can see, the operating status is uh, online and the provisioning status is active. So let's see what we have mentioned in the OC service. See, get S V C. So you can see we have mentioned the port as 8080 for the service and same is reflected over here, the protocol TCP and the port as 80. So till now what we have is we have the OpenStack load balancer like whatever service we have created when the OpenShift it has its corresponding load balancer it has its KLB it has the listeners it has the you know uh, the what we can say the members and the pool everything is uh, till now you know up to the mark. Now let's try to see how exactly uh, uh, the traffic passes on this uh, three pods and uh, how exactly the load balancing happens. Now I'll just try to get the node. All right, so I'm inside node and let's try to make a curl. I just got the IP. Yeah, this is the IP. IP and IP. Sorry. All right. So you can see when I make a curl request, it goes to one of the pod on port 80. And um, as I am having a you know, HTTP Apache install, you can see this is the default Apache page which I'm getting upon every curl request. So like, I'll just try to grab something because the output is too large. Okay. 
every time I make a you know curl request, it lands on um, you know any one of the pod. So that's how a load balancing happens. So in in this scenario, like I have the same test page. Uh, so that's that's the reason you might not be able to see like on which pod exactly the request is going. But as you can see, the curl request is happening. That means um, it's it's rotating between um, each of these three pods. So the next thing uh, that I'm going to show is uh, very interesting. So till now, whatever we have seen, uh, that was the, what I can say, the front end of the uh, uh, load balancing. Now exactly what happens at the backside, like using the OVN flow rules, how exactly this load balancing happens that uh, I'm just trying to show you. I'll just exit it from here. And so uh, this this is my uh, OpenStack controller node. I'll just increase the font. I hope this is fine. So this is my OpenStack controller node. I have logged into my OpenStack controller node using the heat admin, the normal user. So uh, just before moving to the actual OBN plot, I, I'm not sure like how many of you are aware about uh, this um, you know OVN functionality, but uh, I'll try to explain in short. So uh, whenever a new OVN provider you know load balance request comes, like if you, if you if you have seen, I'll just try to show you again. Yeah, so if you if you can see over here, um, I have the provider as OVN. So there are two types of provider basically, uh, as uh, I've just mentioned earlier that one we have is the Amphora provider and the other one we have is the OVN provider. So over here by default, considering, uh, you know, this is as the this deployment is using the OVN ML to Neutron plugin. So by default, it gets enabled with the OVN provider driver, okay? So whenever a new OVN provider, you know, LB request comes, the OVN driver creates a, you know, a high level entry into the OVN northbound DB. So there are terms with respect to OVN called as northbound DB, southbound DB, then OVN controller. So that we need to understand first. So whenever the OVN drivers create, a, you know, whenever a, a new request for the OVN based load balancer comes, uh, the OVN driver creates a high level entry into the OVN northbound database. Then uh, there's one more thing called as the OVN North D. So what it does is basically convert that logical entry from the OVN North D database into the logical flows and stores it uh, into southbound database. And uh, then lastly, there is one more thing called as the OVN controller. So what it does is, is actually does the open flow compilation job. So first, what we'll do is first let uh, see the logs for you know the OVN creation, like uh, whenever a new LB is created, how exactly the database entry is made. So we'll just try to see the log. So I'm on OpenStack controller node, and so the path for the Octavia logs that where we are going to actually see the DB entry for the OVN is a var log containers Octavia and we are just going to access this Octavia file. Okay. So I'll just try to grab for sorry let me do thing one thing i'll just grab the id itself yeah this one so I've just highlighted the log entry, okay? 
So what it basically does is, um, so you can see OVS DB app dot backend dot OVS ideal transaction. So what it does, it basically opens up a you know connection to the OVN northbound DB using this OVS DB app library. So whenever a uh, new load balancer creation request is made, uh, it creates a row in the OVN's uh, load balancer table and um, update its entry for the uh, name and some of the network related uh, uh, you know, dependencies. So as you can see, um, I have this OVSDB app uh, library than this actual uh, command like uh, when the request was made. So we have a DB entry over here and uh, the fields like the name of the, sorry, the ID of the load balancer. Then I have the VIP as well, like ending with um, 165 then the rest of the details like vip port id so whatever you uh, whatever the details that you see in openstack load balancer show that all gets uh, enrolled over here as a part of a db entry now let's check how the actual load balancer entry looks like from ovn northbound standpoint so i'll just get out of this file now and ovn Oops, there's some problem. Okay, so I guess I have a long list of load balance. So what I'll do is I'll just in this file and So let's see how exactly the entry of the load balancer in OVN northbound table looks like. So I'll just find for this ID and I'll highlight for you this entry, how exactly the OVN northbound entry looks like. So as a part of external IDs field, I have uh, you know all the dependent things um, for that particular load balancer. Like I have the listener ID, the pool ID, then the, um, all other reference IDs, neutron port IP, etc. And one thing um, uh, you know we need to specifically you know see over here is the VIPs, like uh, whatever VIPs we have. Uh, I mean the endpoints that we have mentioned over here. So that gets. Uh, you know, uh, enrolled as a part of the database. So ending with 21, 242, then we have ending with uh, the another one ending with triple true. So these are all the IPs of our pods basically, and we have a port as well, 80. And then the first one is our um, uh, actual load balancer VIP with the port. So now exact now actually what happens is uh, we have these details, okay? So OVN northbound table have these details. Now, actually what happens is this detail will get converted into logical flows. Now, let me show you how exactly the OVN logical flows looks like and from the southbound table. And just clear it. OVN. I'll just first give you like how exactly the flow looks like. So this is uh, not that much readable. So I'll just try to grab for keyword backend. Okay, I have too much entry. I'll again grab for um, IP of one of the pod. Yep. So as you can see, the flows are present in the form of tables. Like over here, we have table equal to 22. And uh, where it has a priority value as well, like priority equals to 120, then we have a match field. 
and then we have a ca.ct.new which stands for connection track or contract what we called as and we have the ip or vip of the load balancer and the destination port as 80 then we have a action for this field this is the mean action like a CT control uh, contract a load balancer and we have the IP of that pods now so this is just a one single flow example of flow so likewise uh, there are you know other flows as well so now what happens is uh, this gets translated to OVS flows so if I check the flows on the um, um, default integration bridge uh, from the OpenStack point of view like uh, BRI int int Let's see what we can see over there. Oh, yes. Number flows. We are in. Okay, so over here we have a lot of flows. So uh, one thing I wanted to mention over here is that in OVS, there is a term called as groups or groups tables to process the flows of load balancer. So what I'll do is I'll just try to grab for group. Let's try to see what we get in the term groups. I'll try to grab for the IP. Ah, okay, that's what I was expecting. Okay, so let's try to understand this flow. So what, basically, what I've done is I've just created, you know, I've just tried to extract the, you know, uh, flow from the group's uh, perspective on the integration bridge. So this is, uh, you know, uh, part of the flow where we have uh, the group ID as 126, then type as uh, select. And uh, for that particular method, we have uh, some, you know, fields uh, like um, source IP, destination IP TCP source and destination source as well so we have uh, another field called as bucket so it has a relative wet in the form of uh, integer this one this relative weight in the form of integer so this weight is being used by the data part engine or the switch uh, you know, whose type is uh, select basically so then we have uh, neat netting that is uh, done on the member, this one. So this is our member IP. Then we, um, like it's uh, netting has been done before it's actually passed uh, via the routing devices. So uh, similar calculation is being done for some other members as well. So I'll just try to show you uh, log for another member. Yeah, so this is uh, for another member, like ending with 242. The similar sort of logs uh, we can see for the another member as well. So basically, uh, what uh, is happening over here with respect to the OVN flows is that OVN uses group action you know, to select one of the backend member. So if the packet is sent to the VIP, the OVS flows uh, with respect to the group action jumps and select one of the bucket like uh, whatever i mentioned over here you know, based on the weight so if the bucket id is uh, you know a zero is selected then the packet is uh, sent to the connection tracking and uh, the destination ip is then natted to the backend uh, member ip and the uh, connection entries then committed okay so in short, uh, OBS uses group action along with the contract uh, to do the load balancing over here. So this was the logic uh, behind how exactly the load balancing is made using the open 
open flow rules, like uh, OVS rules, what we can call it. So this was uh, about the you know the demo part, CLI part. Uh, I'm just open to the questions. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. I'm just stopping my screen. Hi, Rohit. There's a question from uh, Shrikant. Um, Shrikant, if you wish to uh, ask this question live, you can ask for permission. We can even uh, you can even be live. Yes. Yeah, so or... I'll, 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 what I'll do is yeah. I'll just read the question for everyone and try to answer. I hope that is fine sure. with Shrikant. Okay. So the question what Srikant I have asked is, uh, can we try using OKD on open source uh, OpenStack? Uh, along with courier SDN to use Neutron and Octavia services. So the answer over here is yes. But uh, frankly speaking, uh, I have tried installing, um, you know, for while I was preparing for this lab, I just, you know, uh, before moving to the OpenShift, I was trying on OKD, but I, I face uh, a little bit of challenges while deploying on OKD, basically. So that's why for, for time being, I've just switched to OpenShift. So your answer is yes, uh, we can do that considering the upstream beats. So if you have any questions, uh, you can just ask directly or uh, you are feel free, just feel free to post it in the chat. I guess we are already over time, but uh, still, I guess uh, we can continue. 